This is the X16. So why did I go from a 20 inch e-bike to a foldable 16 inch e-bike? The answer to that in this episode. I wanted a foldable e-bike which can be transported easily to any part of Singapore for me to do food delivery. I have had my Colmex e-bike from Maximal SG for the past one year. Aside from normal wear and tear, I have not had any major issues with it. The X16 has the same design philosophy, a ready to use, easy to maintain, safe e-bike for the long term. The thicker rear tyres combined with the suspension on the front offers an amazing riding experience of comfort. The frame design has strong reinforcements and the rack is welded, allowing the e-bike to carry heavier loads without worrying of any breakage. The front suspension absorbs vibrations while riding, thus minimizing stress levels on the frame and on my body. The X16 package that I got comes with a 48 volts 14.4 AH battery and a 9.6 AH battery. So this is the base model that I'm starting from. And uh, however, I did opt to get some additional add-ons as well. So let's look at the accessories. Maximal SG's signature rack extensions. I love these and I'm so glad that they actually incorporated this into the X16 as well. So let's put them on and installation is very very straightforward. Just place it over here, put the nuts in, screw it in and that's it. You're done. I got this suspensions flip up seat post as well as a new bouncy seat. I decided to remove the kickstand and instead got the heavy duty double stand instead. Uh, the reason why is because it seems to offer greater stability when the bike is folded and I decided not to get the roller wheel as well as the double stand right the heavy duty double stand uh, it serves the purpose of you know the when the bike is folded uh, it still remains in its stationary position uh, in a very stable manner. I furthermore decided to change the handlebars as well the grips uh, so I got these type of, uh, you know, the, the flat beak type of uh, grips, uh, which I will change shortly. And the final accessory that I got would be this bottle cage holder. So uh, actually, uh, this bottle cage holder, I, I'm starting to kind of like regret why I got it. Because, uh, I don't know, maybe it might be a better decision to just keep my water bottle in my delivery bag instead of, you know, like mounting it here, as that might be another obstruction when I'm folding the e-bike. Huh? But uh, I'll play it by ear lah, as it goes. I will be reusing my phone holder from the Colmax, so let's go and install this. This is the only thing which I actually carried forward from the Colmax. This is the first version of the completed setup at the moment. As I continue to use the X16, I will update my experience with it as well as what are the additional changes like what are the things that I continue to further add on or remove from it and uh, we shall see as I you know, uh, gain more experience with this particular e-bike and my new way of uh, working uh, for, as a food delivery rider. Now, uh, regarding the turning light system, I sold my Colmax with the EKC turning light system installed. So I am actually reconsidering if I should uh, reuse the original Maximal SG turning light systems. Uh, I, If you guys remember my first e-bike video, the second video that I released, I actually got the turning light system from Maximal SG. So that particular version of the light, I still have it. Uh, but however, because it would take some time for me to install it, I have to figure out a way on how to install it on the X16. So once I'm done with it, then I will show you guys. Uh, this e-bike is the first build model and uh, Maximal SG sold this first edition to me. 
If you have pre-ordered the X16, stocks are expected to be available around the first week of September. Check out their website for more details and pricing offers. The X16 is compact enough to enter the lift without tilting the e-bike, even with the delivery bag installed at the back. This is how you turn on your X16. There's a little button over here, which is the power on and off. And you can see over here, just wait for it to finish flashing. So right now it's on. And the mode wise, you have the trip. This is your odometer and this would be your voltage. So right now it's at 54.3. Uh, that would be, I guess, the full charge. And uh, the lowest charge that it will cut off power is at 43 volts. Once this hits 43, that's it. Uh, you should still have some power left, but it's very, very minimal. Uh, ideally, you should be back home by the time it hits 44. Lights wise, it's the same setup from the Colmex. So this is the light, it's a dedicated switch for light and uh, over here is the horn. Let's try out the horn. Eh? Yeah, it's the same horn. I'm over here at Tekwai Lane, my neighborhood. So, you know, uh, for riders who have not been here before, Tekwai Lane actually has a circuit, which is a loop around this uh, particular area. What I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to go and try out all the various uh, three paddle assist modes to see what is the range that I can hit at each uh, mode. Sir. And uh, right now you can see that, uh, okay, so I'm at mode one. Okay, let's go start off at mode one. Okay, a little bit of an uphill over here. Wow, the suspension seat together with the front suspension is very, very comfortable, man. I tell you guys, if you guys are getting like the like this uh, X16, uh, go for the suspension seat. It's, it's really, really worth it. <laughs> yeah, I can literally tell the difference already. So this is a slide uphill and uh, paddle assist one, okay, we are at 17 kilometers per hour on uphill, slight incline, okay, uh, not so bad, okay, a little bit more steeper, we are coming a little bit steeper incline. Okay, 18. Okay, we are leveling off. This is the leveling part. So, okay, maintaining at, okay, 19, 20 on paddle assist one, mode one. So the average seems to be between 18 to 19, I guess. Yeah, a little bit of an of a incline. Okay, and then it's uh, leveling off again. So this is this stretch, right? It's a fairly flat road. So this is where we can really see what the mode one true speed maybe is. Uh, Yeah, 21, 21.8. Yeah, the on flat surface, right? On mode one. Okay, now we are going a little bit downhill. So it went to 22 lah. But I would say on average flat surface, uh, this e-bike is at uh, 21 kilometers per hour. 
Next, let's try mode 2 on the same circuit. Wow, quite. The pickup is quite okay. Like, it seems to be a little bit faster pickup compared to the Cole Max, you know. But uh, for me, pickup is not really an issue. Uh. Okay, incline, uh, like a little bit of a descent over here. Alright, let's go to, we are at mode 2 guys, remember? So, I think just now this stretch was at 17 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so paddle assist mode 2 it's at okay this is an incline there's a slight incline so incline 20 20 kilometers per hour oh, the speed it's quite impressive lah. okay a little bit more incline oh not bad lah. 24 24 okay Average seems to be about 24 on a slight incliner. Then, okay, we are reaching the level ground, the fairly uh, straight, flat ground. Let's see if we can hit what is the maximum we can hit. Uh. So, 24.4, 24.4 kilometers per hour. Just now, how much did we hit? Uh? Oh, I also forget. <laughs> okay. Wow, oh, but you know, just now that hump, right? I went over it. Oh, no problem, man. The the suspension, uh, really. The suspension is really, really good. So it seems to be tapping out at 24.4 kilometers per hour, lah, on this. Okay, we are back where we started. Okay, now it's time for mode 3. Let's do this. Whoa, the acceleration is really, really quite good. It seems to be almost on par with the Rogi, man. Rogi S Plus. Yeah, the pickup is really good at, at uh, the torque. La. The torque is really good at uh, mode 3. And... Wow, easily. No effort at all. 24.4 kilometers per hour. Twenty-four point four. Okay, this one is the slight incline that we are going up. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. It seems to be average seems to be about 24 on the incline okay coming up to the another incline over here and uh, yeah 24 okay so i the speed limit at mode 3 right it seems to be pretty powerful but the lcd display right it actually taps out at 24.4 let's see if i can get it to go faster So it's at 24.4 kilometers level ground. So I'm actually able to achieve the speed on mode 2 itself. And uh, okay, we are done. We are almost there. Almost there. Hey, okay, yeah, we are here. Okay, good. okay, we are here already. Next up, we are going to be doing a slope test. 
so this is a pretty uh, steep incliner so let's see at pedal assist one what is the speed i can get from a standstill when i start off from a standstill point of okay 14 average about okay 14 to 15 kilometers per hour lah on this slope next up is pedal assist mode 2 okay let's try this okay talk is a little bit faster okay same slope hit 18 okay 18 17 18 kilometers per hour Next up is mode 3, paddle assist 3. Let's try this. Oh, the cup is really insane. Okay. Uh, 19, 20. Okay. So, average is around 20. Overall, I'm very happy with this e bike. Uh, the suspension works great. Uh, however the greatest improvement is if you get the e-bike with this front suspension and you also fit a seat port suspension at the back then you know you have the best of uh, both worlds uh, suspension at the some sort of suspension at the back and on the front and uh, it gives for a very very stable very comfortable ride going over humps not an issue at all but however i do recommend that you avoid humps la, you know you slow down la. but in the circumstance where you don't see it right if you go over it yeah it's uh, it, it doesn't really like the the impact right the suspension seems to absorb it fairly well and uh, the you know riding the 16 inch e-bike it's uh, it's pretty good actually but however there are a few things which I observed while doing the test ride for today and uh, I'm gonna share them with you. These are not deal breakers, they are actually things which I think that riders should be aware of when they, are, when they decide to purchase this uh, e-bike. The first issue was that I found getting on and off the e-bike a bit cumbersome with the bottle cage uh, attached here. Hence, the first thing that I did after I got back from this test ride was to unscrew the bottle cage and uh, remove it and screw the screws back in. This bottle cage actually comes with a clamp as well. So this clamp uh, goes, uh, you, you just need a screw to screw it into the clamp. And that clamp, right, it has uh, some sort of like, you know, those uh, uh, turn clamps which you use for your seat post basically you just screw it in and then you know press the lever down and it will it, and you can just attach it to your extendable stem and this is how i i'm gonna actually try it out if this doesn't work then i guess i'm just gonna put my water bottle into the food delivery bag as always number two it's about the foldable rack extensions well the e-bike once you fold it if you install the rack extensions right you will notice that the e-bike does not completely close and they do not use the magnetic sensor for it to auto lock uh, maximal sg does provide a separate velcro handle which is included in every e-bike and i actually use this to secure the e-bike once folded so that it doesn't open back up again Number three, owners who own a Colmex Plus and are thinking of reusing their existing foldable rack will not be able to do so without modifying the rack. The previous version's uh, metal plate is actually wider. So hence, because now the S16 and the X20 have the controller at the bottom of the rack, the extensions will not fit without cutting away a portion of the metal. However, the new version of the rack extensions fits perfectly. Hence, my suggestion is even if you have the old version, don't reuse it because it's just not worth the trouble. Just get the new extension instead. 
Number 4. I found if I use the e-bike with the folded rack in its non-extended state, my heels tend to graze the side when I pedal. Therefore, I need to flip up the rack even when I use the e-bike for commute and I don't have uh, any bags or anything at the back. The X16 is a step up from the previous generation. There is no doubt about that. I am glad the foldable rack extensions have been rebuilt for the new generation. However, I am a bit disappointed that I am unable to use the built-in magnets to secure the e-bike when folded, but uh, it's a minor issue since I can still use the provided velcro binder to hold the e-bike when folded. I like the innovative front suspension a lot. I will know how well it works as I use the e-bike over time. I highly recommend getting the flip up suspension seat post if you are considering the X16 or X20. It, it will be hard for me to go back to a non-suspension bike from now on. Battery wise, Maximal SG are sticking to the previous battery sizes of 14.4 AH and there is a new 9.6 AH capacity which together introduces a concept called flexi battery whereby riders are able to interchange them on the same e-bike. Now as a part-time rider, the 14.4 AH has more than enough juice. However, I would still like to find out exactly how long and how many orders I can complete on each battery 14.4 and 9.6 If you own a Colmax Plus with a 14.4 AH battery you can simply reuse the same battery in the X16 or X20 Finally, I would like to mention Mode 3 Now, Mode 1 and 2 was exactly what I expected similar to the Colmax Mode 3 on the X16 is very very different. The acceleration or torque on Mode 3 seems to be exceptionally powerful. Riding uphill on Mode 3 felt far more faster than the majority of the 2023 e-bikes that I have tried. If you are test riding the X16 or X20 for that matter, try Mode 3 and you will feel the tr difference, trust me. Recently, I have not been posting that many delivery videos, but that is about to change as I embark on a new series of adventures on this new foldable e-bike. If you would like to be notified whenever a new episode drops, consider hitting the subscribe button, ride safe, be safe, and I wish you all good earnings. G-Man signing off.